Hitler and Ross, a guide to new religious movements, published by University Press in 2005. It's rumored that Robert Thurman, director of religion at Columbia University, formerly a Tibetan Buddhist Lama and the protege of Geshe Wangul and the Dalai Lama himself, is Agvan Dorjiev's successor and closely connected to his vision of the Shambhala utopia. Often called the Billy Graham of Buddhism, Thurman openly maintains that he will celebrate the Buddhization of the United States within his lifetime. What is the underlying worldview of Tibetan Buddhism as it pertains to the U.S.? First we begin with Thurman's skillful and diplomatic approach to Islam, which according to the Kala Chakra Tantra, is one of the historic and future monotheistic enemies of Buddhism in addition to Christianity, Judaism, and Mahdi. And I quote, For both Buddhism and Islam, love and mercy, the energies released by the surrender of selfishness, are the supreme energies of the universe, all good, all creative, all wise, all trustworthy. The true Buddhist and the true Muslim should embrace once and for all. Let them only be intolerant of intolerance in the name of their own or any other's religion. Let religion never again be a cause of harm to beings. Let it only be the road to the inconceivable sea of bliss for all. End of quote. While it sounds delightful, is it true for Tibetan Buddhism or just skillful rhetoric? Secondly, what is the underlying operational worldview from which Tibetan Buddhists conduct themselves in the political realm? A look at the Red Tara Mandala is most instructive. And I quote, She is extremely seductive, the deity this mandala is being offered to. Her red color and subjugating flower attributes emphasize her more mundane activity of enchanting men and women, ministers and kings, to the bewitching power of sexual desire and love." End of quote. One former Buddhist reminded me that President Clinton had his affair with Miss Lewinsky only days after his visit with the Dalai Lama in the White House. So what you say? It became clear on September 21, 2005 when the Red Tara Mandala was consecrated at the new office for the International Campaign for Tibet located behind the capital. Who is this Red Tara? She is the empowering tantric consort for Avalokitesvara, the patron deity of Tibet, also known as the Dalai Lama. The remarkable tenure of the Dalai Lama as God King for Life surpasses every president since Franklin D. Roosevelt. During the House deliberations on awarding the Dalai Lama the Congressional Gold Medal, Nancy Pelosi, the House Minority Leader, a Democrat from California, pointed out the long-standing relationship with the Dalai Lama through relaying a story about his first contact. Franklin Roosevelt, as President of the United States, gave His Holiness one of his favorite gifts, which was a gold watch, which had the phases of the moon on the watch. It was a wonderful thing, a gift from the President to the little boy who had been named the Dalai Lama. Other Presidents stood more aloof, fearing to displease the leaders of the PRC. Then President Carter, understanding the importance of religion and statecraft, met with him, followed by Clinton and President Bush, who on September 13, 2006, signed a law into effect to award the Dalai Lama the Congressional Gold Medal, the highest civilian arm award in the land. The United States' political ties with the Dalai Lama extend back to secret CIA operations overseen by Presidents Eisenhower, Kennedy, and Johnson. In 1956, the U.S. government secretly, secretly trained 300 Tibetan combo warriors in the military's winter training camp in Colorado to assist the Dalai Lama. He later thanked the CIA for organizing guerrilla protection during his flight into Indian exile. Throughout the 1960s, the Tibetan exile community secretly received $1.7 million a year from the CIA, according to documents released by the State Department in 1998. Once this fact was publicized, the Dalai Lama's organization itself issued a statement admitting that it had received millions of dollars from the CIA during the 60s, 
to send armed squads of exiles into Tibet to undermine the Maoist revolution. The Dalai Lama's annual share was $186,000, making him a paid agent of the CIA. Indian intelligence also financed him and other Tibetan exiles. Mind you, at the time President Kennedy was making 22500 a year. The Dalai Lama met with President Clinton in the White House just days before the Monica Lewinsky affair broke out. A former White House aide claims that Gore is a crypto, meaning secret, Buddhist. Perhaps the more most bizarre revelation is when Buddhist nuns testified that they had destroyed documents to conceal contributions to the Dem Democratic Party. When the former leader of China visited the U.S., the Free Tibet demonstrators followed him everywhere he went in the United States. Mike Peters caught Premier Jiang's frustration in, his, in this cartoon where he asked President Clinton, can't you do something about these Buddhist demonstrators? To which the president quietly replied, that's the vice president. At the 7th International Conference on Christian Buddhist Dialogue at Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles, one speaker spoke <coughs> on the mandalization of global politics based on the Buddhist sand mandala in the same temple hall that Gore had visited some years earlier related to the campaign financing scandal involving the Tibetan nuns. On October 19, 1993, the same time the Kala Chakra is being constructed in the Kala Chakra mandala is, was being constructed in Tower One at the World Trade Center. After the first World Trade Center bombing in 1993, the Samaya Foundation, the Lower Manhattan Cultural Council, and the New York Port Authority jointly sponsored a sculpture of the Kalachakra San Mandala in the lobby of one of the towers. Namgal monks invited many World Trade Center workers and visitors to participate in the construction of the mandala. It is said that its shape symbolized nature's unending cycle of creation and destruction and in the countless grains of its material, it celebrated life's energy taking ephemeral form, then returning to its source. The dispersion of the San Mandala concludes the ceremony. At the end of the Mandala's month-long lifespan, the monks swept up the sand and offered it to the Hudson River. This ritual, they believed, purified the environment. <coughs> 